Firstly, we have implemented a whole of school um, pedagogical framework, the art and science of teaching, of which, as you would know, deep learning is a significant part of um, the ASOP pedagogical framework. So all, all teachers and students are exposed to that and teachers use that as a, as a medium for consistency of pedagogy. And um, it's important that, um, that teachers have a common language around um, teacher talk and uh, around learning and teaching and pedagogy in our school. We also provide um, time for teachers to plan and assess together, which provides that opportunity for, for teachers to share um, ideas around deep learning and around how they may, may develop deep learning in their students and deep thinking. We, uh, we've reduced the number of assessment items over the last two years, particularly in the junior secondary years, to allow for time for deep thinking and deep learning. So we've moved from a situation where we had um, in excess of 15, 16 assessment items per semester for years seven, eight and nine students. And we have reduced that number to about 11 across the semester in, in each of the years, seven, eight and nine, to ensure that teachers have the time in the classroom to um, develop deep learning and develop deep thinking um, skills and opportunities for their for their students and to provide that opportunity for the analytical and the critical thinking and, and, uh, and learning. I've also employed a, a thinking coach in our school who works directly with teachers to develop deep learning opportunities for students. We have um, encouraged uh, teachers to set open-ended assessment tasks as well, which provides that opportunity for students to um, collaborate and for students to engage in, in learning opportunities that are not closed, that are open, and um, that really um, provide the opportunity for students to guide their own learning and guide their own thinking and uh, engage in some, some discovery and experiential type learning. Problem solving is a big part of that uh, process. We also provide opportunities for teachers and students to move outside of our school and develop relationships with higher education institutions so that we can broaden students' perspectives and horizons. So for example, we work very closely with, of course, University at the University of Queensland, but we also work closely with the problem solvers um, of Australia. We've made some significant links with um, Melbourne University High School, for example, which is one of the other leading schools in um, the teaching of philosophy. So uh, our staff work very closely with the staff, the teachers of Melbourne University High School, and um, together we're, we're sharing assessment items and sharing learning opportunities. We've introduced the teaching of philosophy in year seven and in year eight at our school as well, because we have um, elect an elective subject of philosophy, critical uh, thinking and, and critical reasoning, um, in years nine, 10, 11, and 12. So it makes sense that um, we, we expose all of our students across years seven and eight to the, to the subject of philosophy and teach students how to think from the, from the moment they come into our school in year seven. I think one of the, the greatest challenges that I have is the issue of consistency because of the size of our school, the number of teachers, the number of students. So uh, it's really important that, um, that uh, we provide a number of different opportunities at a number of different levels for teachers to uh, engage with, uh, with deep learning and for teachers to be reminded of and exposed to the concept of deep learning. It does take time, it takes experience and it takes uh, um, a lot of time for teachers to work together to prepare and plan. So it's not something that, um, that our beginning teachers necessarily have from the moment they walk into our classrooms, but it's something that we nurture in our, in our teachers as they begin at our school. Coaching and modelling is, is really important and uh, we encourage team teaching as much as possible in our school. In fact, we've allocated some of our uh, Investing for Success funds to, uh, to uh, break down some of the walls between classrooms to enable some, some uh, more team teaching across classrooms. We also uh, very much encourage um, teachers to uh, spend time in each other's classrooms and critique each other's teachings. So we've been doing that for about two years, um, 
and uh, we've seen some really tremendous results in relation to the feedback that our teachers are providing to each other. We're also, um, we've also found that it's very, very supportive and, and um, significant for our beginning teachers to engage in that process. Challenges um, that we face in a large secondary school in relation to um, the, the concept or teaching of deep learning is time and consistency. Time and consistency would be the two biggest challenges. Uh, our teachers are very committed and uh, teachers generally, um, you know, right across the board, I believe, want to do a great job and uh, are very committed to their profession. But it takes time and um, it, it also takes um, time to develop the confidence to uh, engage in collaborative learning opportunities, to engage and take the time with students, um, to provide the time for the students and have the confidence to uh, let go of some of the content and uh, really provide that um, time in, in, in minutes, um, significant number of minutes in each, in each lesson to, um, to give those stu our students the opportunity to develop their deep learning understandings. Recognising that students and teachers all work at different rates. Uh, they learn at different rates, they work at different rates and they understand at different rates. One of the other um, significant challenges, I guess, is providing um, time in the curriculum to teach thinking. We have a very overcrowded curriculum um, in, in Australian schools and uh, that's a real challenge to, uh, to be critical around the content that we deliver and um, to address the overcrowding and provide the opportunity for um, deep learning and deep thinking. The other thing I need to keep in mind is the opportunity to celebrate um, the deep learning in our school. And that's really important that um, we take the time to uh, share our students' um, portfolios take the time to share our students' learning with our community so that we demonstrate the significance and the value of deep learning in our school.